there is a drug that has been available in, say, Kazakhstan, Cuba, um, pretty much everywhere in the world but the United States uh, because of uh, a bit of development that happened maybe 10 years ago. That's a drug called trabectidin. And, you know, we've all been involved in a clinical trial that's moving forward and it's been reported and, you know, is now at the FDA. And so, Dr. Jones, since you're actually able to use trabectidin when you want, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? <laughs> So thanks. Um, trabectidin is a marine-derived compound uh, derived from the Caribbean sea squirt. Um, as you rightly um, mentioned, it's been available in the European Union and other countries for um, over five years now um, and has been evaluated in uh, soft tissue sarcomas from uh, the late 1990s. Um, in terms of the approval in the European Union, it was approved on the uh, basis of a randomized phase two trial comparing two different schedules of the drug and additional information from three open label uh, phase two trials in soft tissue sarcoma. Um, interestingly, uh, the quality of life played um, a some parts in uh, the discussions regarding um, approval in certain countries. Um, the drug has now been finally filed with the uh, FDA in November 2014, based on the results of a randomized phase three trial in patients with metastatic lipo and leiomyosarcoma previously treated with an anthracycline plus one other um, schedule. And we're all very eager um, to find out what the FDA's final decision is because this is clearly an active drug in uh, soft tissue sarcoma. Um, patients can have very good durable benefit with good quality of life uh, factoring into Andy's uh, earlier comment regarding some of my uh, <laughs> uh, pronouncements on the clinical trials. So it's a, it's a very, um, very good drug. Fatigue can be um, uh, a major problem. Liver toxicity is important to um, monitor, and very rarely the drug can cause rhabdomyolysis. Uh, you know, Dr. Patel, since, you know, George Dimitri presented this at ASCO, and you're actually presenting an update in ESMO, do you have any comments on maybe the efficacy and safety results we're all going to be discussing, and maybe the, a little bit about the trial? So, so this is a drug that clearly has shown consistent benefit over, a more, over more than a decade. Right? I think the original phase two data that Robin was just talking about sort of held through in the current randomized phase three trial. Uh, the difference here was that it was compared to docarbazine as an active control, and there is significant improvement in progression-free survival, uh, but not a significant improvement in overall survival. I think the response rates consistently have been, resist response rates consistently have been in the eight to 10 percent range. Uh, so all of those numbers are the same as we have known for this drug for quite some time. I think there is a group of patients who can tolerate this treatment for a very long time. There are subsets like myxoid liposarcoma that are ex more sensitive to this drug than others. Uh, so the drug clearly has had a role. I think the sarcoma oncology community has been waiting for this to become available as yet another option for patients to, to use. Uh, and so we all uh, anxiously await the final decision whether it will be approved in the U.S. or not. So and, Andy, really briefly, there was, a, there was a nice little abstract on the use of trabectidin and whether to keep it going or to stop it after, I believe, six cycles. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, so that was uh, reported by Axel Asen and, and from France, and um, they they looked at what would happen if you discontinued trabectidin mm. and, and after six cycles, as you mentioned, and they found not, not really surprisingly that the tumors would progress um, more rapidly than for patients who remained mm -hmm. on trabectidin. And I think that reflects their general management of metastatic soft tissue sarcomas that unless there's uh, toxicity or progression or the risk of significant toxicity, as we can see with anthracyclines, we usually continue treatment until progression or toxicity ensue. Con continue treatment until progression or toxicity ensue. So what are your thoughts on liver toxicity with the Omnilus? Well, I think Robin alluded to it, too. This is one of the known side effects of the drug. Um, we, we, um, we 
we continue to use it as part of an expanded access study. And one of the mandates of the study is that you get uh, laboratory data in between cycles. Mm -hmm. And it's not unusual to see some uh, abnormalities, some elevation in the liver function tests. Um, and it needs to be looked at. And uh, sometimes the dose needs to be modified if that occurs. Most patients, it recovers by the time of the next cycle. Um, but sometimes there can be significant liver toxicity as well. I think a word of caution would be that transaminitis is not uncommon. And transaminitis of grade two or three is usually self-limiting and may be safe for redosing. I think uh, community oncologists, if they have access to this drug, will need to understand that if, they ha if the liver function tests have an obstructive pattern with alkaline phosphatase yes. elevations, those are the patients who really got into trouble with some life-threatening toxicities. I agree. So I, I, I think that may be the one uh, red flag that we need to plant. And these transient elevations, if they've not resolved by the time of the next cycle, then it's be it should be Correct. delayed until they have resolved. So Jonathan, let's pretend that Jan, Jan Dallas or Trabactadin is FDA approved right now. And can you make a case, at least on the back of a napkin, of who you'd be giving what to and what order and how histologies are gonna be yeah, I suspect you know I suspect the approval will reflect its use in the in the phase three randomized clinical trial, which will be the so-called L-type sarcomas, liposarcoma, and leiomyosarcoma. And uh, as has been mentioned, trabectidin does have clear activity in these histologies. And you know, if you look at the curves, there is a far out to the right, there is 10% or 11% or so of patients who do very well for a very long time. So, so those may be the patients who we should better understand who are benefiting from this drug. I don't think that we know who those patients are a priori, although we do know the myxoid liposarcoma patients respond very well for a long time with this agent. Pazopanib, as you know, is approved for soft tissue sarcoma, excluding certain histologies such as liposarcoma. Mm -hmm. So the, the real key in figuring out how, in, you know, how, to how, how to make the optimal use of trabectidin and pazopanib in, in the current climate, in, in the current approval, is going to be with the patients with leiomyosarcoma. Is this something that can be moved up into second, first line? I don't think we, kn we know what are the appropriate combinations. But really figuring out in third line whether to give pazopanib or trabectidin is going to be, um, you know, again, back to a personalized decision based on patients' expected toxicities, expected tolerance, and, and how, you know, other factors that may be specific to, to that individual patient.